Why did Russia escalate its gray zone conflict in Ukraine? Now, most of the answers you hear from the media these days are basically the bad guy monologue from an early 90s action movie. We are going to bring back Soviet Union to its old power. Now I made an issue laying out that idea the last time Russia put a bunch of troops on Ukraine's border back in April. Not exactly when a neighbor of the year, you guys. The more specific question I want to address today is, why change the nature of this conflict now? You see, for more than 7 years, Russia has been leading one of the most coquettish invasions of a foreign country. Oh good heavens, us invade Ukraine? We would never. Or would we? Now, a bunch of armed and trained Russians independently went over there and started stirring some things up. Russia said, don't look at us, they did it on their own. So why, after more than 7 years of this hint of invasion thing, has Russia suddenly found a new comfort with labels and decided to maybe put a ring on this whole invasion? In 2014, Russian forces in disguise dubbed Little Green Men moved to occupy Crimea. These forces were the equivalent of changing your name from Jonathan to John so that no one would know who you were. Now this geopolitical equivalent of a fake mustache carried on one major advantage. This thinnest of veils appears to have been designed less to conceal the identity of Russian forces and more to just sorta equip leaders in the United States and Europe with a pretext for inaction. Don't worry guys, this isn't a Russian invasion. It's a local uprising, armed by us, with independent Russian forces going over there and doing most of the heavy lifting. Now this sort of invasion light war with a major asterisk doing most of the heavy lifting has been happening in eastern Ukraine ever since 2014. So why in 2022 would you start putting flags on your forces? I mean, it's hard to hand wave. Oh yeah, these separatists, they just got their hands on an entire tank division. Don't look at us. Now this aggressive threat of open invasion is puzzling. If as many pundits and defense experts have assumed, Russia possesses important advantages in gray zone conflicts. If you got a winning hand that you're playing with, don't start changing the cards. Now the big problem for Russia today is, these I can't believe they're not Russian forces are getting their butts handed to them in this ongoing proxy war. In something you don't actually hear much about, Putin can see that the pro-Russian political forces in Ukraine are slowly losing ground, that Ukraine continues to invest in its military, and that others are doing so too. Beyond just losing ground, of course, Russia's not exactly doing too hot in the Ukrainian public relations department either. Tends to happen when you invade a country. Ukraine is getting pushed further and further towards Western integration while at the same time reclaiming more and more of their country. In 2014, there was an ongoing debate about whether to take a loan from Russia or the IMF. Today, that Russian loan would be unthinkable. Now with all this in mind, heading towards a long slow defeat on its border, Russia is confronted with three stark options. Now first, you could hoist the white flag and just get the heck out of there. Hey little green men we have no association with, time to come home. That, well that's not going to happen. Now second, you could stay the course and just hope things kind of change on your own. Unfortunately for Putin, Putting things off until the next election, not really an option in Russia. This is generally thought of as kicking the can down the road a bit as Ukraine closes in. Now, Lastly, if you don't want to lose quickly, or lose slowly over time, you could crank this thing up a notch and send in the tanks. Ukraine might be really good at shadow boxing these Russian, not Russian, forces, but fighting the actual Russian army, good luck. Russia is really debating these final two options right now. Keep up this losing insurgency sort of thing, or invade outright. Now with this new perspective in mind, Russia isn't so much approaching this situation with a strong hand, and more with a, 
Oh man, our strategy is not working over there. Time to change something or risk a chaotic western border. Now the answer here comes down to deterrence. Is the cost of invading right now worse than the cost of continuing losses in the Ukraine and potentially having to invade in the future? The main cost of an invasion right now is whatever the international community is willing to cook up. That answer appears to be, we're not going to send in any of our own troops, but oh, oh, oh boy will we sanction you to the point that even Iran is going to feel sorry for you guys. Will this work? Well, the guy in charge of it certainly doesn't seem to think so. Great. Going back to the core of this episode, Biden said in his somewhat pessimistic speech, it's one thing if it's a minor incursion and we end up having to fight about what to do and not to do, etc. But if Russia launches a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, this would be a disaster for Russia. There's your American leadership. Keep this minor incursion thing on the DL and we can look the other way. Invade Invade on the other hand, and ho oh ho boy, you're gonna have hell to pay and no money to make that payment. Unfortunately for Russia, the cost of staying the course is that the Ukrainian government, well, they're taking back ground, winning PR victory after PR victory, and growing in the process. The costs of an invasion from Russia are steadily rising because of Ukrainian economic growth, national consolidation, and military investment, and suggests that the price could rise more in the future. Now, To sum up this entire episode, Ukraine is winning, Russia is losing, and unless Russia does something, that trajectory probably not going to change. Biden and Europe's goal in all this is to deter a change from Russia by imposing costs that would make changing the conflict status unpalatable. Unfortunately, they don't appear to have much faith in themselves accomplishing that task. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and subscribe, ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.